Welcome to Eagle Live. What a break from Manoa. Interviewing your favorite USA Eagles around the globe. Tony Lambeau into the 22. Now, here's your host, Bill Baker. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Eagle Eyed Rugby Podcast. I am your host, Bill Baker. As the VO guy just said, uh, take a moment when you can. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Now, uh, today on this episode, I have Malon Aljabori. Malon recently hung up his seventh boots and has gone full time 15, signing with Ealing Trailfinders of the English competition, the Green King IPA Championship. This is the same club Andre Dorotalo and Ben Landry landed at at one point. Hopefully a good fit for Milan too. So Milan and I talk about this decision uh, to sign with Ealing and what went into that decision to go full-time 15s and give up on 7s. And uh, his hopes of wearing a US 15s jersey this summer, hopefully. All right, hope you enjoy it. Here I am with Milan. Hey, Milan. Hey, how are, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How was your move over to London? Um, it's good. It's been, it wasn't the, I, I say the best timing. Uh, if I, maybe from my other's perspective, because obviously the Olympics was right around the corner. Um, I just feel like it was the right time for me to, cause I mean, I love, I mean, I love it. I love sevens. Trust me. It's just like my natural game to me is 15s. And I just didn't want to pop the opportunity up to join Ealing. Um, right now, so yeah. Other than that, it's going good. I'm I'm really excited to get back into a full time 15s environment because it obviously it's been a while since I've been had that full time. I think since the World Cup is my last like proper match, which is yeah. only like two years ago now. Um, yeah. So it's been good overall. All right. So, so speaking of Ealing, obviously, um, congrats yeah. again on that move. Um, what went into that? What was behind this move? I know you said trying to transition yourself into 15, especially in a, in a sevens Olympic year. Now, what went into this decision to go to Ealing? Um, I just feel like it was the right opportunity. And um, Ealing was the, we've been like trying to like we've been, we've been chatting for about two years. I think just right before the World wow. Cup, they, they kind of reached out to me, um, but obviously nothing was settled. Um, then they just offered, and I was like, ah, this is too good. I just want to I just want to play 15. I just I miss I, was, I miss 15s a lot. Uh, I just feel like it was a rare opportunity, and like, and I'm from a small town, so like being getting an opportunity to live in London, it just like I didn't want to pass up. Yeah. <laughs> well, what now? What about the timing again? I know um, Ealing is only a few weeks left in the ceiling in the season. So, what does your contract look like, and what's it look like after a few weeks from now? Um, yeah, is yeah. Like I said, the timing was a bit odd because they're in the middle of the season. I think they have we have about four matches left, but the timing. Uh, again, again, it's a tough decision, but I'm here yeah. until next summer uh, for sure. So I have this next season uh, after obviously this last couple of weeks finish. Oh, so, so two, 2022. Yeah, 2022 yeah, okay. summer. Um, I just wanted like I knew it would take me a while to adjust from obviously being full time sevens to 15. So I just want to take this time to like give myself the best opportunity for next year, season as well, uh, just for to put my hand up for matches and uh, whatsoever. Yeah, so get the learning curve out of the way as far as Ealing's yeah, uh, camp situation. Uh, as a forward, obviously, there's, like, more tactical things. There's just line out in the mall and everything. Like, sevens is pretty simple. We just just run. And make <laughs> um, if that's simple, all of us would be able to do it. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, so, so, okay, so when we first heard the announcement of you joining the team, it was maybe four hours later we saw you in selection for the match. So, how long were you? Have you been in Ealing camp, or was it literally? It couldn't have been that fast because you probably had it. No, nah, it wasn't that fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I'll, I've been here about just over three weeks now. Um, the visa process took a, a while, um, but yeah, I think properly training with the team for about almost three weeks. Um, so yeah, the announcements were obviously delayed a little bit, but I finally got my run out uh, this past weekend, which was good because I haven't. I was, honestly, I just really wanted to play rugby. I was really excited just to play. Now, what was the situation here in the States with 15s? Now, you were assigned with San Diego. What happened there? It just didn't work out? Um, just that it was just like a mostly like a like a part time thing. Obviously, with sevens is yeah. based. And if you if you didn't make any squads with the sevens, um, obviously, it was hard to travel due to, during the with the pandemic. So the seven circuit was kind of off for a limit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got to play um, for Legion if it was. Obviously, if like everything worked out, if you make selection and they wanted you to come play for them, then 
obviously it's always good to play some rugby. Um, but then, yeah, so then I try to focus on uh, sevens, um, obviously for the Olympics coming up. Um, then I just feel like yeah, then this opportunity came. I feel like I wanted to do it. Now, does does this opportunity with, with you going contract with Ealing and fifteens? Does that take you off the table for possible Olympics, or are you still going to be joining them? Uh, no, that's that's off that's off the table uh, for me. Um, yeah, like I say, it was it was hard decision. Like, yeah, I yeah, it was hard because I I spent four years and almost four years with uh, in San Diego with the sevens program. Um, that's why it was so hard to leave. And I obviously I made relationships with all the boys there that I'll never forget. Um, but yeah, I just I I know like my game is uh, 15s, and I just wanted to give it a go. Now, did, was there anyone else behind this decision to go to Ealing, say maybe um, Gary Gold, whoever, saying, listen, the more minutes you can get down, the better chance you have of being in selection this summer because there's been all these summer, all these rumors for summer matches as well. No, I wanted to, I, I made like a priority, like this was my decision, obviously because yeah. the, the Olympics and everything is involved. Obviously, the Olympics is such a big event. So some people thought I was like, what are you doing? Why can't you just wait <laughs> until, obviously, if, you made, if I made the team, um, just go to play the teams after. But... I thought it was the right time. I didn't really get any, like, I didn't really listen to anybody on the outside regarding what, like, decision I should do. I just, I just knew I wanted to play some rugby, and I just missed that 15s environment, um, just playing. Um, that's yeah. what the, I, I like the decision, like, made by me mostly. I didn't really, I didn't really get much uh, advice from outside because I knew, like, this was decision I had to live with regardless of if I made the Olympics or not, this is what I wanted to do. Now I know through uh, Andre Dorotello that uh, Ealing is is a is a first class um, you know organization. You know, I don't know how well you know him or if you discussed with him at all his experiences with Ealing, but he fit right in as a loose forward. <laughs> yeah, you know, me and Drew talk quite a bit. Uh, now he yeah. told me good things about Ealing. Uh, obviously, like, like I said earlier, it's been like a, a like a process for a couple of years now. Yeah. Try, kind of like kind of chatting back and forth about me coming over. And obviously, Drew had nothing but good things to say about Ealing. And that's when I was like, all right. Now they got some familiar faces that I know because Ben Landry also played for Ealing for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, that was a good way just to see, like, I'm not just like some random guy that showed up, had some connections <laughs> through Ealing. Yeah. <laughs> well, no pressure from you because uh, Drew, I think he was man of the match in the first two matches he played in with Ealing, but no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Uh, so... Your next step, um, obviously, you want to be in selection for the Eagles this summer, um, and then you're with Ealing going into next year. And I ask this because for for Drew, his goal to get the Premiership and play for a club, which he did for a short time, is that something you're thinking about down the road? And this is not against this is not you wanting to leave Ealing. It's just is that a goal for you? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, my ultimate goal when I came over to 15, I just wanted to play at the highest level possible. And obviously, here at Ealing, they have um, goals to get to the Prem. Um, so like if that it was the case and like I'll be I'm just trying to do my best to help them get to that point. Um honestly it's really simple. I just, I just wanted to play rugby. I just like yeah. obviously sevens is such a hard especially like our team, the USA uh team is such a hard a hard process to get into the squad because everyone there's so many good players there. Um and I just were, really just wanted to play rugby. That was what came down to it and I feel like this was the best way for me to do that. So and I 100% agree with you. I mean, the only way you're going to get yourself to the next level is by playing rugby, playing rugby, playing rugby. But um, and there is Ealing. The championship rugby is is a pretty high level. But were there other options available to you in the states with MLR that you just put aside because you wanted this chance to play in London? I didn't. Not, not any that I know of. I think if I would have tried to like reach out, maybe a couple of teams would have like uh, like offered me. Maybe I didn't. But I didn't really reach out. To me, it was more so like I'm going to try to play abroad. Or I'm just going to stick with sevens, because um, like my goal was I was I thought I was planning on just committing sevens because this is what like I like don't get me wrong I love sevens but um, then this opportunity popped up like obviously London and I just like I'm from Oklahoma <laughs> like not many people where I'm from like <laughs> to live abroad so like I need to do this. Now I, I was researching a bit of your past and I mean you're only 23 years old you've done a lot already right. And, uh, I mean, high school All-American 7s, you know, All-American 15s, um, Lindenwood, um, you know, some really good teammates in there as well as Chance. Uh, yeah. Again, Cap USA, you played in a Rugby World Cup. I mean, you've done a lot already at 23 years old. So, you know, looking back, and this is kind of a deep question, I guess, um, and, and this has to do with London as well. You've traveled a lot of miles of rugby, but, you know, 
what have you gotten out of the game so far in these years from playing in high school on? I mean, what, what's been the most important part for you, the most enjoyable part? I think the most important part to me is just the experience you get to travel. I think it, it gave me like a lot of perspective of, of it's about life in general and the people I've met. That's why I don't really want to want to say I, if like come down through two months from now, like I could have made it, I could possibly made Olympics and I regret it. I don't think I would because I'm I love that I went to play sevens in San Diego, mm-hmm. um, and I just all people I've met on my way there and all the places the sevens and being in the circuit allowed me to see like we've obviously been in Africa and Hong Kong and all the other places. So I think the biggest thing for me just like all the travels I've been through is just the experience that and the people you meet. That's why I love rugby so much because obviously I played football in high school. Um, that's why I like I think rugby is like the greatest sport because I get, I get to meet everybody from all the different cultures and just gaining perspective. I think that's what life is about: is gaining perspective of other people and how they live and how they work. I want to talk about one or two of your room your, your teammates here. And I was reading about your short time with the Brumbies shortly after high school and. Um, okay. there was a, just, there was yeah, like yeah. one line there where you were doing these 10 meter sprints and they list the times and the way you competed with their full-time players, you know, you re, you re, ran the 10 in 1.6, but I saw a chance when Gluski ran it in 1.52 seconds. I don't know if that's off or not, but how does okay. a prop beat you in a, <laughs> in a 10 meter sprint? <laughs> I don't know. That was, honestly, I don't know. Me and Chance go, we go way back. We obviously went to high school together. Uh, yeah. we played, yeah, we played, we played a lot of sports together. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, if it is, then credit to him. Like, I'm not, I'm not the one to, to get sour about it. But yeah, it's faster than me, faster than me. Well, it's on the internet. It must be true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, and one, la- exactly. one last question for you, uh, uh, Maylon, and I really do appreciate you joining me. So talking about teammates through sevens and fifteens, um, I had a, a friend of mine said, listen, you need to ask him this question. He says, who's your favorite teammate and why? <laughs> of all, with the sevens or just with all time? Either one, either one, all time. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's tough. Because I had a lot, I had a lot of deep connections with those boys in the sevens yeah. team. I, honestly, I, don't, I can name a few. I, I can give you a few. I can't give you one because it's. I've met like 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 you said before. Like I, I've been, I've been like pretty well traveled. I got the, like the opportunity to do that. All these things. And I met a lot of people that. Like I have a relationship to this to today about or with. Um, I think one of my one of my favorite teammates is Brett Thompson. I like Brett Thompson. He's a good guy. Me and me and Brett go. We, we mix well together. Uh, Kayvon Williams is another one. Um, we really had connected when I when I got to San Diego. Obviously, I was I was just a kid coming to San Diego, uh, fresh out of Lindenwood. So it really like taught me like made me feel comfortable around the boys. So I have like some of those boys. Lorenzo Thomas is another one. Obviously, we we uh, grew up together, um, so he's another big teammate of mine. Obviously, Chance. We obviously went down to the Brumbies together, and all through age grade. Um, yeah, I have a lot. I mean, I, like I said, I love like all my teammates, especially down in San Diego, because that's where I I think that's where kind of I grew up a bit. Because obviously, I got there when I was eighteen, nineteen, then obviously just leaving now, and that's kind of where I became like who I am in a way. Um, so that's why I, I have like a special place to San Diego in the sevens program in my heart because they helped me get, get through what I, what I got through and just like maybe that experience much better. Good answer. I think I you're not going to upset anybody with those answers. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not the one to do that. I'm not, if anyone knows, I'm, they know I'm not the one to do that. I mean, maybe in yeah. person I might, but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, Malon. Listen. Thank you so much for this. Uh, for giving me your minutes here. Uh, you know. Good luck with Ealing for the rest of the season, and hopefully we'll see you in a USA uniform this summer. Appreciate. It. Thank you for taking the time. Appreciate it.